Hi everyone, this is Elrules364 from Elrules the World, and today we'll be repairing our PlayStation 3 controller that I found in a field destroy a couple of months ago. And I have a shout out to give to Dirt Dog Scrapping. It was his idea, he suggested this video, so I'm going to leave a link to his channel down in the description below. Just click the link and it'll take you to some crazy awesome finds that he's been coming up on lately. So thank you very much Dirt Dog Scrapping, I appreciate it. Also, a word of warning, if you don't know how to solder, I suggest using YouTube to do so. All you have to do is type it into YouTube, it'll bring up some videos on how to learn how to solder, and you can go from there. You can get started to solder very easily, and you can do it for about maybe 20 bucks if you know where to get the stuff. Except for one thing, don't go to Radio Shack. Fuck Radio Shack. Seriously, those guys are terrible. Stay away from there. Everything there is overpriced, and you don't want anything to do with Radio Shack. Trust me. Fuck those guys. Now that we got that out of the way, we're going to move on to the tools that we're going to need. We're going to need our crimpers, or wire strippers, as some may call them. Now this is an upgraded pair. When you put the wire here and you squeeze in on these two prongs, it's going to tear the wire apart and reveal the bare part. So I like that a lot. That's, that's a nice feature. We're also going to need scissors. We're going to need either razor blades. I prefer razor blades because they're smaller and they get into places a little bit better. But you can use a knife as well. So knives work too if you don't have access to razor blades. But these are about maybe two bucks if you're lucky at a hardware store. These are pretty cheap. We will also need solder flux or soldering paste. Lead free, of course. Don't get anything with lead on it. You get it on your hands, you accidentally eat a T.O., you are fucked. Then we're going to need some solder. Now, I suggest not using lead free solder. You want to use the older stuff. The older stuff has lead in it. It sticks to things better. Yes, it may be bad for your health if you inhale a lot of it, but definitely better than a lead free stuff. This, this lead free shit sticks to nothing. I can't get it to stick to anything at all. So it's just kind of here for show today. So we'll be using the lead solder and you'll also need heat shrink tubing. Now this can be found at any regular store. I pick these up at Harbor Freight or even at the flea market. You open it up, comes with um, a whole bunch of shrink tubing. You got extra large, the too large, then you get the mini stuff for the smaller wires, and then you have the medium stuff for the medium sized wires. So yes, those are the tools we will be using. And we will also need a soldering iron. Now this one was $4 from Harbor Freight. That's a normal price, that's not the on sale half off price. That's $4 for the soldering iron. And it gets the job done pretty well. I've used it quite a few times as you can see. And what I'll be doing here in just a second, I'll be taking the wires and I'll be stripping them and we'll be cutting off the one piece of wire that the GameStop employee shredded and once we cut it, it'll, we'll have a nice clean solid start. So this way when I cut the wire, we could just pull it off and then go from there. So I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll cut off the wire and get started. Okay, so now that we have the wires cut off here, what we're going to do is we're going to measure back from here. Now, I usually use a thumb length worth of wire in order to get this done. So you're just going to take your thumb and run it back here. Now, I've already pre-cut this wire, but what you want to do here is you want to take your razor blade and you want to cut around it. Just go very easy, very light. You don't have to rush. It's like a Bob Ross painting. You want to go away around the entire wire, and then once you're finished, you want to wiggle it back and forth so the rubber breaks on the outside, and then you can just pull it off. Wrong part there. But see, just like that. Now the reason why I use so much wire is because of the heat shrink tubing. If you get it too close, like right up here, and you accidentally hit it with a soldering iron, it shrinks, and then guess what? 
you're gonna have to use some electrical tape because you're fucked. Okay. Before we get to any more of this wire, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our heat shrink tubing box. And we're going to grab a wire cover. Now, why do I call this a wire cover right now? What I do is I slip this right over top, like so. There we go. And you're going to slip it over top, and it's just going to cover the wire. That's all it is. So you're going to make sure this is all the way down at the bottom of the wire so it doesn't get any heat. So you want it all the way down near the end there. Okay. This will be down and out of the way for now, and you'll see what we'll do with it later on. Now you want to choose a bigger piece of this is because once you're finished with this, it's going to be a little bulkier than it was when we started, which is normal. So it's a good thing to choose just a little bit bigger. This will shrink down to the size of the wire so you don't have to worry about it sticking out or anything. It's, it's not going to look weird, it's going to look like factory. Except the wire is white and the tube is black and like I said earlier we're just going to have to deal with that. Okay. So, we have our stripped out wire here. And we're going to need a lighter. Yes, I forgot to mention that earlier. Yes, you will need a lighter for this. It will not do it on its own. So you're going to take your lighter, and you're just going to light this shit on fire. Just like that. Now, you can cut it off if you want, but I like lighting it on fire because it's entertaining. Now that we have the other wire out of the way, we're going to look at this one right here. This one goes to the controller, and it is kind of short. Um, this is not going to be extended at all. So we're just going to do the same thing that we did for the last one. We're going to take our razor blade, and we're going to go a little bit back here. And we're just going to cut around the outside of the rubber. Make sure not to go down too hard on it. You don't want to mess it up. Okay, I'm going to wiggle it back and forth a little bit and pull it off. And there we go. That's why I like the razor blades. They work a little bit better. So we're going to take our lighter over here and we'll burn this. All it is is just insulation inside the wire. You don't need it. It's just basically a bunch of string in there. Same thing with the outside aluminum foil coating on some of these other wires that you will see soon enough. You don't need any of it. You can just throw it away. Cut it off, throw it away, burn it, whatever. But you will be needing this wire. Okay. Well then, let's get started on the rest of the fun stuff. Now that you got everything done here, we're going to have to make sure that everything's fine with the wires before we start stripping anything. And it looks like it they all made it through and they look good. So we're going to take our wire strippers finally. You gotta strip just a little piece of wire off. Doesn't have to be large, just this little piece right here. Let me zoom in for you so you get get you an idea. Just that little piece right there. You don't need much. Now we'll get the white wire. And 
and the green one next. Okay, and now we need to get the black one. Okay, now that we have all four of these wires stripped on this set right here, we're going to move to the other one that contains the other side of the USB. Now it's interesting to note that these are common. Anything that has to deal with the USB has these four wires inside of it. So you have black for ground, red for power, and then the other two send data to the USB. So white and green are data. This is just here for insulation as well, but I like to solder it together just in case it might go to something you never know with these anymore. So yes, these USBs are uh, very common. Anything that uses a USB port probably has this. So yes, uh, this can apply to phone cords or uh, charge cords for a controller. Just about anything that uses a USB has these four wires. So let's move to this one. Same deal with this. Now I'm going to skip over this to save some time and we'll see you in just a second. And welcome back. Now I've already taken the liberty of putting these two wires together because they don't really matter and they're not really that important other than an extra ground wire so again not important you don't really need it but I always do this just to make sure you never know with new age controllers it could go to something really important so it's always good to be on the safe side so what we're going to do now is we're going to take one of the data wires so let's say we do green first so you're going to make sure that this is all twisted up like so and that the wire is nice and neat so if you can see the other ones as compared to the green one they're all a mess the green one looks really nice so this is exactly what you want to do before you start soldering so it's not all over the place and it doesn't get in between the wires that you want to solder Now let's do the same for the other side. This side has the shrink tubing on it. So we have to be careful. If we get too close, we might damage the wire or shrink the shrink, shrink tubing. So we want to be really quick about this when we start soldering. Okay, now it looks nice and neat. Same thing with the other one. Now we want to bend these back just a tiny bit. Don't go too far. Because if you do, you might end up breaking the wire, and then you have to start all over again, which I've done a couple times. It's not fun. So you're going to remove the other two pieces of shrink tubing, put them to the side, and you're going to match them up. You're going to see how much shrink tubing you need. So that's about how much you're going to have to cover. Now, you have your wires. They all look nice. You're going to take your solder flux. Uh, there's, it's kind of nasty in here, but this is what solder flux looks like on the inside here. And you're going to take your wire and you're going to dip it. Dip, dip, potato chip, dip, dip. Alright, you're going to do the same with the other wire. Dip, dip, potato chip, dip, dip. Just like that. Now that you have your wires covered in flux, we're going to take our soldering iron and we're going to get us some solder on the end of this. So here's my lead solder. Now we're going to take it and we're going to touch it to the wire real quick. See all that steam that just came off of it? I don't know if you guys can see that at home or not. But 
if you can see that, that was the solder bonding to the flux. So we're going to do that again. I'm going to take it and do it for the other side now. And there we go. Now what this is called doing is tinning the wires. You're tinning the wires so that when you match them up together and you go to solder, all you have to do is just dab a little bit of solder on it and they're good to go. So let's get these two together. Sometimes it's going to fight you. The wires don't like to stay together all the time. I think this one is fighting me right now. Can't get it to stay put. There we go. Or not. All right, you're going to fight me today, aren't you? There we go. <laughs> That'll keep it from moving around like that. All I need to do is get this lined up with this. Yes, it will take a little bit of practice. It helps if you have a weight next to you so you can put it on the wire so it stays put and doesn't fly around all over the place. So what we're going to do is kind of come over here and grab some more solder. And we're just going to solder the joint together. Okay, see, all I did was just touch the wire, and there we go. A nice solid connection that you can depend on. Depend on, excuse me. So now that you're done with your connection here, you're going to slide your shrink tubing right over top, like so. Alright. And as you can see, it looks really nice, really clean. If I used electrical tape, it would be all bulky and... It wouldn't stick to the wire and it wouldn't shrink down so I, did, I would have a lot of room taken up inside the shrink tubing that we will put over this later. Okay, let me find my lighter here. So we're going to take our lighter and we're going to make sure this is nice and square where it needs to be and we're going to light it. Burning shit. There we go. You have successfully soldered one wire. Now that's the data cable to the USB. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Just complete the other four like you normally would on this one and you're good to go. So let me do that real quick and I'll bring you back to our final couple steps. And I'm finished. And this is the end result right here. As you can see all four wires have been soldered together successfully and the heat shrink tubing bonded to all the wires perfectly covering all exposed wire right up so there's no issue right there and this other wire back here you can just leave exposed because there's nothing else to interrupt the uh, stream of data that will or electricity that will be coming through these wires to the controller and back to the PS3 so there we go pretty easy now the next step is we're going to take the heat shrink tubing that I had you guys put on earlier and you're going to slide it up right over top of this. So we'll do this. Now I had just enough on this one to cover all the wires. I would suggest using a little bit larger of shrink tubing. Now if you forget, sometimes you'll be able to find maybe really big shrink tubing that you can just fit right over top the USB, but it's always best to just slide this over top before you start any of it, just in case um, you don't remember later on. Okay, now we got that right there. I'm going to take my wire and run it over here so you guys can see this real quick. All right, see right here. I'm gonna make sure that all the wires are covered. And 
like I said, I'm no expert on this, so don't take anything here to heart. I'm trying to figure out a way to do this here. Now you just want to go up and down with it. Just like so. And then do the other side. Just watch you don't burn yourself. Take your time, be careful with it. I just realized that some of my solder flux got onto my wire. Whoops. Okay, so there we go. We have one completely repaired field destroy controller. It wasn't that hard and it didn't take that long. Now with this larger shrink tubing, you're going to have to make sure that it dries out for at least 15-20 minutes before you ravel it up or do anything with it. So what I like to do is I'll take the controller and I'll take the wire and just have the wire hang over just like this right over top the table on the edge so this way it dries in the proper position and later on when you start to flex it it'll flex with the wire so you don't have to worry about it breaking open or anything like that. So that's it everybody that's how to repair a field destroy item. Now these field destroy items come along every couple of months. I get a whole bunch of them. Every once in a while I get very rare field destroys where they don't do that much damage like this one. But for the most part they take a hammer and they beat the shit out of everything. I've been able to repair some controllers by just getting parts from field destroys. So say I had a field destroy and there was a controller there that was smashed to shit. I mean there was nothing left of it. So I, I picked up the parts, threw it in a box, put it in my car, drove home, put it in a bag, saved it for later. Well, what do you know? A couple of months later I come across the same exact controller, but it has the other parts that I needed. So I put that one in my car, bring it home, and I put I make one out of two controllers. So I have one functional controller that I made out of two. And it works. They, they work. So I'm going to go upstairs real quick. And I'll plug this in. And I'm going to turn on my PS3 and we're going to see if it works or not. Alright ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment of truth. I've plugged the Rock Candy PlayStation 3 controller into my PS3. And we're going to see if this works. If it does, it means we've done the repair correctly. Here's my controller. I have an LED on, which is a good sign. That means it's getting power. Now, what I'm going to do is move the analog stick to the right and see if I get any response. I have gotten a response, which means this controller is fully functional. Let's try the X button. X button works. How about the circle button? Circle button works. How about the triangle button? Triangle button works! Oh my goodness, we fixed it! Eureka! So yes, another controller from a field destroy that has been fixed, fully functional. It can either be sold, I can use it. I'll probably end up giving it away to a kid who needs it. Uh, thank you for watching today. I really appreciate it. Uh, these videos will definitely get better as time goes on. This is my first time making something like this, so I apologize if the quality isn't that great. If you have any questions, uh, have any requests, leave them in the comment section below. PM me, get a hold of me somehow. But, um, yeah, this was a, a very fun episode. I enjoyed doing this, and I got another free controller out of the deal, so awesome. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next time. L rules out.